All right, what's going on guys, it's Liam here and welcome back to another video on the channel and in today's video I want to talk about the Wizard 101 barrier to entry for PvP and just like advanced content and stuff like that in general. Now originally I was going to make today's video the Arc 2 cantrips guide but my recording of about 40 minutes got corrupted so there's absolutely aids and I would have had to find another group of people to do cantrips with and it was like really really annoying so I will do that another day, but for today, we are talking about the barrier to entry. Now, I was on stream about a week ago, I want to say, and I talked to my chat, and I was like, okay, so if you want to PvP, if you want to raid, what is all the stuff you need to get into the game? So I actually decided to go on my lower level character, where I basically don't have every single piece of gear in the game and every pet. I was like, okay, what do I need from like each slot? And then from there, it was very easy for me to articulate what I need and portray what I need. So I actually wrote this down today and we're gonna talk about everything in today's video. So yeah, we have 11 points today of the barrier to entry. And yeah, number one, let's talk about the knowledge of knowing what the meta pet is. Meta pets are subject to change. You know, you might have a good solid pet that's good for a couple of seasons but then the next season will come and that pet is no longer good and then you have to remake one again so you have to know currently what the best meta pet is make that pet and hopefully by that time you have to hope that the meta doesn't shift again or you have to go farm a new pet or a piece of gear and that's a whole nother thing for the barrier to entry. And I see this get confused a lot is people are like, oh, the game changes too fast. And as somebody who actually does PvP quite a lot, I'd actually argue that the meta does not change fast enough in PvP. We have cards that are broken and oppressive and make the game borderline unplayable for months on end. In terms of like pets and, you know, gear and stuff like that, that stuff, I agree. That stuff should not change you know, very off often, like that changing like once, you know, uh, a year, t max twice a year. I mean, okay, I think that's okay. But I think everything else like spells and like broken crap in the meta that's being oppressive, that should be changed right away. Anyways, back on topic here. You have to know what the pet is, make that pet, and hopefully by the time you have that pet, you are good to PvP. Okay, number two, you have to know how to make the pet. You have an idea of what pet body you want and how to get it. Okay, now you have to know how to make the pet. You have to know the exact pet numbers needed. Uh, if you guys are curious how to make a pet, check out my pet guide on the channel here. I talk about everything in depth, but you have to know how to make the pet. You know have to know how to get a farm, a couch potato farm. Uh, you know, evil magma pea farm, right? You have to have a lot of these things saved up already. A lot of gold, a lot of snacks, right, guys? A lot of time as well, right? You have to have crowns for EEs and P9s and hashing elixirs, maybe, right? Once you know the pet you want to make, you have to, you know, get that pet. You have to get the numbers up. You have to know how to track a pool. You know how to, you know, make a base and stuff like that. You have to know all this. You have to have a reliable, you know, uh, farm that can give you gold consistently and snacks consistently like me for example i have four farms for you know uh gold and powers and mega snacks so i personally like never run out that's why i'm able to make like literally four pages of meta pets for every school pretty much now number three you have the kroger jewel which is actually attached to the pets as well now if you don't know what the kroger jewel is guys i'll be showing you guys what that is on screen right now couple of examples we have the brain core pet i made for the new meta for a storm uh basically i can socket a bracedify instead of actually making remaking the whole pet i can just simply buy the kroger jewel it'll give me the, the defy i want and i can socket it on the jewel now you could farm this free to play and you know hate yourself and hate your soul and not respect your time you could do that as well but even if you do that you're not going to get the chance to get a may cast brace right and may cast and pvp are extremely extremely broken especially brace and like d lance and just in general i think they're too good but brace and d lance i'd say are the ones that are just way too oppressive right now and i'd really like to see ki do something about them but yeah i mean they're really important because they literally change the game Right, I've literally won games off of it and lost many games off of these main casts before, so 
you know, not having this at especially at higher ranks is like almost like a throw. Therefore, that's pay to win. That's another thing you should probably get if you want to rank up and play PvP. Next up, we have stat mounts. These are all objectively pay to win. You can get one in the Avalon bundle for forty dollars. Little fox guy. He's pretty, pretty cool. I got him on my alt account. And then sometimes in the crown shop, you can buy the Clockwork Courser. Now, uh, again, I'm like 90% sure there's literally no free-to-play way to get these things. And if there is, uh, they're beyond unreasonable because I've never, ever heard of it. I feel like I would have heard of it if it was a reasonable rate to get this stuff. Next up, I want to talk about the meta gear, which essentially is the gear you need to actually play the game and you know have it be fair essentially and therefore stand a chance to rank up so the meta gear is all locked behind a pack always so the current pack that is pay to win in the game right now is the wastelander walrue pack um and then before that was like the burrow pack and you know the sky fairies pack before that and you can go so on and so forth uh with the years as well I know Professor's pack as well has been pretty good for a long time at the lower level leagues as well, guys. So we have meta pay to win pack gear that you can only get by opening your wallet. And then you have the raid gear, which obviously uh, is also coming to a pack pretty soon. One of the templates from the raid are the Jabalba set, I'm pretty sure. But you have raid gear as well, which is inaccessible to a lot of players now. They did make guild hopping a bit easier to do as of a recent update, which is cool, but that doesn't change the fact of the matter. You have to have like the right set of, you know, template gear, farm all the pins, farm all the pets, know how to read a guide, know how to navigate the, the raid and not hit a wisp, know what to do, know how to adapt, know how to get your cantrips up. It's a lot of work, right? Just to get gear that you might get to get in the PvP. It's a lot of work and it's really grindy and ridiculous. I personally love the concept of raids. I just think the design of it is not good. Like I think having 12 people on at the same time is insane. They could have done like 8, like something like Destiny does. I'm not saying Destiny is a better freaking game or whatever, but I'm saying like 8 versus 12 even as like way better right that's four less adults you need to worry about so like i tried doing a whole stream without raid gear and it's just like it's literally unplayable it's insane this really needs to change if you're king's Isle, please look into this this needs to change guys also you have to do some nightmare farming you know because you can't just get all of one or two templates no you need the raid gear you need the hun how you need the shababa you need the reaver gear uh, you know, you need the Skyfarer's ring, maybe, right? <laughs> you need the Wastelander hat. It's a lot of stuff. Then you need your pins, you need your jewels. Oh my god, it's it's ridiculous now that I say that out loud. But, yeah, uh, you also need some Nightmare stuff, typically like the Reaver theme, or maybe the Reaver amulet, depending on a certain build you might be rocking. Next up, you have to get all of the right jewels. So, like, you know, your accuracy, your pips maybe, your actual pierce jewels, your damage jewels now from Waldru as well, your health jewels on your square, maybe your out outgoing jewels on your square, uh, maybe a tear socket, right? You have to get all of that and maybe get like a pet talent, like, you know, maybe you have to socket a storm dealer or you have to, you know, drop $30 on a Kroger jewel before you can queue up. You need to make sure you have all these jewels in place. You also need to be sure you have all the pins. For example, right, if you're on a myth, you want to duel in the wood swarm or a fire, you have to go out and farm all of the accuracy pins and then get them and then farm all of the best damage pins and then get them and then put them on your gear. The next up, we have the Spellaments grind, whether that's, you know, world stuff like Arc 1, Arc 2, you know, farming Beast Moon to unlock the spell that's like base band, like Regenerate, or, you know, Thieven Dragon, which is meta, Path B, uh, stuff that's locked behind packs, gold keys, seasonal spell elements like Headless Horseman, and then you have like Crown Story spell Reset spell elements as well, which um, is really, really annoying. We did recently have a free buyback, which again, felt really good. Next up, you have to know how to build a deck and how to cycle a deck properly and also spend your training points carefully and also probably do the z quest to have enough training points because you actually have to train like you know 
eight, nine, maybe 10 cards into one school just to get one card or two cards from that school that you want. So this can be a pretty grindy aspect as well. And you have to have an understanding of, again, what schools go good with your school. And if you think something is good, uh, like, you know, for example, a storm dueling with life, even though it's not good right now, but the game says it's good, uh, that might screw you and then, oh damn, now I have to buy back my points and actually go into myth because that one actually is decent and usable. Next up, we have point number nine, which is the black market TC. So typically this is stuff that's like really broken, you know, like Everburn. Uh, I mean, the power is pretty good. Myth Banshee is pretty good. Rain Beetle is pretty good. Just inaccessible TC like that where you can't get it in the bazaar or a vendor or farm it at a reasonable rate yourself. Even as somebody who is a content creator and I have a lot of people help me, it's still kind of hard to find plugs here and there. Um, as of recently though, I have found a couple of very nice people who, you know, know my channel and, you know, give me some of these really good TC uh, for free or just reasonable prices. So. I do appreciate everybody who does help me out with, you know, getting those rare TC. Myth Banshee, again, is a staple of the meta, right? But it's so hard to get, and people are going to, like, upsell that for, like, 50 or, like, 100 in powers per Myth Banshee, right? And at that point, it's like, if you use one Myth Banshee per game, that's 1,000 in powers, like, within 10 games, you know? They should just make these TC accessible at the PvP vendor, or, uh, I don't know, maybe just put them out there somewhere in the spiral i don't really know personally i probably just make them like at the pvp vendor itself and update marco because that man has not gotten an update in a while same thing with raid gear just throw that all into marco and the pay to win pack gear just throw everything into the marco and update him please king's isle next up you have to understand rishambo so your school does three things well and your school also counters two other things so for example on a storm, I am good with blades, weaknesses, and heals, and I'm good against hots and dots. Then you have to understand every interaction, what you counter, what your counter matchups are, and what neutral matchups are, and stuff like that, guys. So, yeah, I mean, there's a whole Rashambo wheel that's out there, you know, it's, it's a lot. I made multiple guides on the Rashambo if you want to, you know, look into that and understand it a bit better yeah i've been yapping for a while now um i feel like this is everything in you know pvp that you need to get into it at least i could be wrong if i miss anything let me know in the comments below please guys i feel like i'm gonna run out of breath this is ridiculous you know um yeah, maybe i should just make like a, a new account and try and get in pvp ready and play a lot and like see how many days it genuinely takes me maybe i should do that anyways i'm gonna head out I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like and a sub if you agree. Uh, if you disagree, okay, fine, fair. Let me know why respectfully in the comments below. And I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. Take care.